Hi everyone, my name is Neetu Yadav. Welcome again to Vakil Search video series on FEMA and RBI related compliances. In my previous videos, I uh, was talking about the foreign investment, foreign direct investment, indirect investment, uh, some spe sector specific conditions and uh, routes like, you know, government route and approval route. My today's video will be specifically on ODI, that is Overseas Direct Investment. So, um, ODI is a capital account transaction. In past few years, uh, it is observed that the trend of making ODI is increasing like year by year. So many of the individual resident individuals and Indian parties are seems to be interested in acquiring the stake in foreign entities. Uh, but before going for any kind of ODI, one should be aware in which sector they are investing their money and which route has to be followed. So let's start with today's topic. So the first question which comes in our mind is, what do we mean by ODI? That means overseas direct investment. So um, if any individual, resident individual or any uh, Indian party makes any kind of remittance um, outside India in any foreign entity uh, by way of uh, contributing to their capital and uh, subscribing the memorandum of association by purchase of existing uh, shares of the uh, uh, entity by way of market purchase or by stock exchange or uh, private placement so it comes uh, under the definition of ODI let's understand the second aspect like who can make the investment so um, any Indian party can make the investment um, um, any resident can make the investment, trust and society can make the investment. Now what includes in the definition of Indian party? So it includes like Indian companies, LLP, uh, registered partnership firms, um, any body which is uh, created by the act of parliament, any entity which is notified by RBI. Now what includes in resident? Resident includes resident Indian uh, proprietorship concerns and unregistered partnership firms. Now, another question comes to our mind is how much can be invested? So if I talk about Indian party, um, they can invest up to aggregate of 400% of their net worth uh, as a financial commitment in their uh, joint venture and wholly owned subsidy companies. If I talk about um, resident individuals, then they can make an ODI, um, you know, as per their um, limit prescribed in uh, LRS scheme that is liberalized remittance scheme uh, which is given as USD 250,000 in a financial year. Uh, I've used the word financial commitment so financial commitment means any kind of uh, uh, direct investment uh, made in the outside entity um, you know uh, by contributing to the equity or to the loan or uh, the guarantee uh, given uh, by the Indian company to or on behalf of the joint venture and wholly owned substrate company. Now, uh, with this discussion, I, I want to make two very important notes. Uh, one is this 400% limit, which is being given as a part of uh, net worth, will be uh, put together um, is a aggregate of all the joint ventures and wholly owned substrate company. That means up to only maximum 400% of net worth of an Indian party. Uh, can be invested in all the joint ventures and wholly on subsidy company. Um, the the second one is if if the financial commitment uh, of any Indian party uh, you know exceeds USD uh, one billion in any financial year, then in that case uh, RBI approval uh, will be required. Now let's understand how um, the net worth computation will be done. So first thing is the net worth will be taken uh, from the, the previous uh, audited balance sheet. And the second thing is it will be a combination of uh, uh, free reserves and paid up capital. Now the question comes is how the investment can be made, overseas investment uh, can be made. So it can be done via two routes. One is automatic route and one is government route. So if your financial commitment is within the prescribed limit then uh, no government approval is required uh, post facto intimation is to be made to the authorized dealer bank in form ODI 
once the odi formalities are done then uh, an annual uh, performance report apr has to be filed every year where it comes to the government approval route in that case uh, if uh, your um, you know investment is exceeding the prescribed limit that is if it is exceeding uh, usd 1 billion in a financial year um, irrespective of that it is still uh, below your 400% of net worth category uh, you have to take a government approval uh, thank you so much for listening If you are looking for compliances relating to RBI, FEMA, or uh, Companies Act, please comment below and subscribe our channel. If you like this video, please click on the like button. Um, you can also go to our website and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and um, Facebook. Thank you so much. Bye bye.